Good morning. That's a little test for my mic song. Good morning anyway. Today's gospel, I'm so glad that it follows last week's, and you'll find out why in a minute. But in this gospel, Jesus says, I mean, the disciples say to Jesus, increase our faith. Increase our faith. And Jesus replies in a way that shows what a nonsensical question, what a nonsensical request that is. It, it's a, it makes no sense in terms of faith to ask to have it increased. He connects it with a tiny little seed. And he says, if you have this much faith, you can make a tree uproot. In another place he says, you can make a mountain fall into the sea. This much, just a little, a much seed. They're tiny. All, you know, all over the country today, people are giving little packets of mustard seeds in their bulletins. So you're welcome. <laughs> Except the way you see. That's what faith is. 
which is um, actually good news. That's actually really good news. In Jungian, in Jungian philosophy, uh, by psychology, and some of you know I was a social worker before, I was a priest, and I learned about Jung, and I'm going to violate his whole psychology right now and simplify it and make peace turning in his grave, but the main thought in Jungian psychology is the way you think impacts the way you feel, and that impacts what you do. I'm seeing some people nodding. Did I get pretty close? Yeah, that's kind of you, right? Um, and the, an example that's given in, to students of that psychology is Suppose you're on a bus, and you stand up to get off this crowded bus, and someone sticks their foot out and trips you. It makes you angry, and you turn around to reprimand the person. And you see that they are blind, and they actually were putting their cane and their foot out because they are also going to get off. And your feelings change in that moment based on your new understanding of what situation is happening then. And you go from angry to either compassionate or feeling pity for the person, but for whatever the change is, away from anger. And instead of reprimanding the person, you're more likely to help them get off the bus or speak to them kindly. The way you think changes the way you feel, and that changes what you do in that case. And faith makes us think a certain way and feel certain things and therefore do some certain things. It is a perspective, a way of being. That's how it changes our lives. It changes everything about us because it's a different way of being in the world. We work from different assumptions. This, by the way, is really good news. This is very good news, and I want to say, after last week, we need some good news. <laughs> right? Last week was hard, and, um, and a hard sermon to give, and hard to watch y'all hear it. And that sermon bugged me all week long. I just, I didn't like it. I never wanted, I tried, just so you know, to get out of giving it. <laughs> and it didn't work. And I went to a preaching conference today, and it had, I mean, this week, Thursday and Friday, and it had bugged me so much that when it came time, you know, we all had to give a sermon, and so I gave that one to hear what my colleagues had to say about it. And they said, that is so true, and on the mark, and right, except it doesn't emphasize the good news enough. It tells us the really bad news, we're rich, but it doesn't tell us the good news that our life in Christ keeps us from being that rich man. And along comes this week. Yay! Bailed out by the reading. Because faith is what makes us not him. Faith is what makes us live the life of Christ. So in our lives as Christians, because we're empowered by faith in God, because Christ is with us in that faith and gives us that faith, we are able to put our material possessions in the right relationship to God, unlike the rich man. And we're able to be with those who are tormented, who are around us, unlike the rich man. Faith changes our perspective. Thank goodness. Yeah. Right? Thank goodness we have faith. It's our treasure. And here's the thing about it. We all have it. All of us have it. And everybody has all of it. It's not pie that we're slicing up and somebody has more than somebody else and the whole thing makes a whole pie. Everybody has all of it. The counterintuitive thing about faith is it permeates everything every group. It's like that drop of Indian ink that you drop in a glass of water that makes the whole glass blue. And it's 
not possible to part that India ink out and say this water is one third India ink or one drop India ink. No, the whole thing has it in there. Faith is like that in our lives. And I've seen it. I've seen it among us. Look at the things we do. We have four main groups working here, not counting the liturgy team. Four main groups that work here, and they all work by faith. The outreach team who takes our message out to the community and helps those who meet God's will in the community. The communications team who works, who strives mightily and wonderfully to make sure everybody is included in knowing about the events that we have and the things that are going on here. The spirituality team. You know, and with each of these teams, as I've worked with them and we've started them, one of the first things we did is make a list of all the things these teams do. And we get page after page after page hanging on the wall of activities and things that all these teams have done and do. Some of you have been in those meetings and you've seen those papers just fill up with the things St. Luke's does. And the newcomers team that is working very hard to, under, to help people who visit or join know those three messages of St. Luke's. You are safe, you belong, you are loved. The three main messages that we want to give as a people of God, we are very faithful. Faithful in communicating that, faithful with each other, faithful in thanking God for His faithfulness to us. We don't just manufacture all this. I have a friend who used to refer to what he called white knuckle Christians. People who just began to flinch in our work. No. We are imbued with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what leads us to the life of me. The Holy Spirit is who empowers us, guides us, nurtures us now in our faith, and gives us the joy of that life. The Holy Spirit is here. A Celtic service we used at the conference ended with a statement that I found so compelling, which was this. Attend to a great mystery. The divine spirit dwells within us. To which our response was, thanks be to God. So I'll leave you with this. What Paul said to Timothy. Hold to the standard of sound teaching that you have heard in the faith and love that are in Jesus Christ. Guard the good treasure entrusted to you. 